Master's theorem is a technique that is used to solve recurrence relation equation of this specific form. The equation contains a recursive part and a non-recursive part. The recursive part contains constant a and constant b, and the non-recursive part contains a function. Now, in order for master theorem to be applicable, there are some constraints on the values a, b, and the function. Like, a should be greater than or equal to 1, and b should be greater than 1, and also the function should be asymptotically positive. But let's dive deeper on why these conditions are there and what actually are a and b. A represents the number of subproblems at each level of recursion. B is the factor by which the size of the problem is reduced in each recursive call. The function f of n represents the cost of the work done outside of the recursive calls. Let's consider a case where a is 2 and b is also 2, and the function f of n is n square. So a being 2 basically says that the problem is being subdivided into two further subproblems, which is represented by the child nodes in this tree. And b being 2 means that at each level, the complexity of the function gets reduced to half, as represented in this tree, that at every level, the n is being reduced to half the previous layer value. A function is said to be asymptotically positive if, for sufficiently large values of the input, the function becomes positive and stays positive as the input continues to increase without bound. Examples of such function could be n square or n cube or exponential functions. So in order to find the complexity of the recursive part of the algorithm, we have to find depth of the tree first. So let's consider the bottom most level where the condition terminates, resulting in a constant value, usually one. So by taking the bottom node value, n upon b to the power k equals one, where k is depth of the tree, we get k as log base b of n. Now, in order to find the total number of nodes in this tree, we can just raise the branching factor of the tree to the power the depth of the tree. And then branching factor is a, because each problem gets divided into a subproblems. So the complexity would be a to the power log base b of n, which can also be written as n to the power log b base of a. So this is the complexity of the recursive part of the algorithm. By evaluating whether the recursive or non-recursive part is significantly dominant, we categorize the algorithm into one of three distinct cases. In case one, the recursive part of the algorithm is significantly more dominant than the non-recursive part. This occurs when f of n is polynomially smaller than n to the power log base b of a. As a result, the overall time complexity of the algorithm is determined primarily by its recursive component, leading to the complexity theta of n to the power log base b of a. In case two, the situation arises where the non-recursive part of the algorithm and the recursive part of the algorithm either grow at equal rates or do not grow at least polynomially faster. This happens when the function contains a logarithmic factor. A function with a logarithmic factor grows faster than a linear function, but not as rapidly as polynomial functions. This places it in a unique growth category, intermediate between linear and polynomial rates, and is closer to the linear one. So in this case, both recursive and non-recursive parts should be taken into consideration. So this gives the time complexity, theta of n to the power log, base b of a times log to the power k plus 1 of n, here the log term accounts for the logarithmic contribution at each level of recursion. In the third case, the analysis focuses on scenarios where the non-recursive part of an algorithm grows at least polynomially faster than the recursive part. The critical aspect here is the verification of a regularity condition, which is essential to confirm that indeed the function dominates the overall complexity. If this regularity condition is satisfied, the total time complexity of the algorithm is determined to be theta of f of n, which signifies that the non-recursive part governs the algorithm's performance. 
Let's apply those concepts to solve some recurrence relations. So this is the recurrence relation for binary search. We will calculate the growth rate of recursive and non-recursive part, and in this case, both are constant time. So that means this is the second case of master theorem, meaning the final complexity would be theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log to the power k plus 1 of n, here k is 0, because there is no log arithmetic factor present in the function. So substituting all the value will give the complexity theta of log n. Now let's do it for merge sort. In this case, both the recursive and non-recursive growth rates are similar. So that means this is the second case of master theorem. Here k is again zero, because there is no logarithmic factor present in the function. So substituting all the value will give the complexity theta of n log n. In the next example, we have a logarithmic factor in the function. And if we compare the growth rates of recursive and non-recursive part of the equation, we can see that the non-recursive part grows faster, but the growth is faster by a logarithmic factor. So that means it lies in the case two, where k is one, since there is one logarithm present. So substituting the values in the general equation will give the complexity, theta of n log square n. Now in one last example, the non-recursive part will grow faster than the recursive part. It might look that the difference is small, but for a very large value of n, it will outperform the recursive part faster. It is the case three relation. So we have to check for the regularity condition, which it satisfies. Now applying the third case, the complexity turns out to be theta of n to the power 0 0.51.